Welcome again, Michael Jimuli, to this program. Thank you. It's wonderful to have you here. Wonderful. And uh, in the last program, we were covering about Uganda and the great revival uh, that took place as a result of your prayers. You mentioned about these serious difficulties during Idi Amin's regime yes. and all these difficulties and pro pro problems that uh, was persecution to the evangelical Christians. Yes. Can you share ab about little more about it? It is so la wide uh, uh, response of uh, to your prayers can you tell us a little bit more about it yeah it was uh, you know 1975 when Idi Amin declared our country to be Islam uh, by the help of uh, Saudi Arabia and uh, Libya and uh, he was given a golden swell it was even uh, broadcasted on the national TV news and uh, he completely closed all evangelical churches and and you know during this time many pastors that persisted to continue uh, vanished in in prisons and and others were murdered and others or no one knows their whereabouts and and during of course the same period it I mean um, murdered his own um, prime minister oh, who no horrible. one knows where he he was buried and it was common to, to hear someone has died, someone has disappeared and there are a number of people who we never knew where they were buried and it was common for a head of the family like a father to go and he doesn't come back mm -hmm. maybe he's working in a big company and the government is interested in this in this position and they just um, take him away and no one knows where he has he has gone and, and they had their secret chambers and cells where they used to keep people and they oh. starve until they die so it was not very easy it was a very very dark period in our country yes but <coughs> as we continue to pray uh, of course there are many a number of people that were forced to become Muslims so that they can get jobs and they can get positions at, at places of work but as as few Christians did never gave up prayer continued to pray in jungles and forests there was a breakthrough a mighty breakthrough in 1979 when Idi Amin was overthrown and uh, this came in the midst of such powerful move of God it gave birth to a mighty revival that uh, produced and gave birth to a number of churches today which we have today and to the Pentecostal movement in Uganda the Pentecostal movement in Uganda came in such a powerful way Praise even God. if it mean tried to persecute them but it came in such a powerful way that many miracles happened and uh, I don't think in Uganda there is a miracle that we have never experienced I think we have experienced all miracles talk about all healings talk about resurrection talk about talk about transformation of lives transformation of big Muslim leaders and today we have big Muslim leaders that were imams who are pastors today so it's it's we have seen miracles we have seen God touching lives and transforming lives of, of, of different people and after this of course in Uganda we had not learned a lesson if I can say we were crisis oriented intercessors yes it is always bad to be crisis oriented it's good to be love oriented or destiny oriented but somehow we were crisis oriented yes. we thought that Idi Amin was the problem to our country so after he was overthrown everybody relaxed and people concentrated on building systems in their ch churches and as a result uh, the strongholds were built all, all over our country and the civil war broke out which almost tore our country into pieces That's civil war funny. was even worse and um, in 1986 the civil war ended and we got a new government which overthrew another of course dictatorship government and during this time a new wave of the Holy Spirit was poured upon our land which gave birth to such a mighty move of God that many young people came to the Lord and today as I talk most the biggest percentage of our congregation in Uganda are young people oh 81 percent Wow and in 1986 That's 
from 1986 onwards, most of the pastors that were pastoring churches were between the age of 18 and 25. Incredible. Very young people, mightily used in miracles. And this is how we have many, when you look at the pastors in Uganda, most of them look like young and you wonder when they started. And they can tell you we have been 20 years in ministry, 30 years in ministry, and they still look young. Because they, God used them when they were still very, very young. Of course, many older people were killed and murdered during those brutal regimes. So in 1990, as all of you know, the enemy changed his tactic and his attack towards our nation. And uh, Uganda was the most infected nation, infected of AIDS. Yes. And the World Health Organization predicted that 30% of Ugandans were sick. And they also Stark. told us that by 2000, half of Uganda will be dead. And only young people, children, I, I, I mean, together with all very old people, will be in the country and they will not be able to sustain the economy. So they predicted that the economy of the nation of Uganda is going to collapse by 2000. So one of the ministers, the advisor to the president, and called upon the pastors and envisioned what the World Health Organization was saying and said, we look upon you as a church to do whatever you can. Mm. As a government, we have done our part and <clears throat> we have not been able to stop this scourge of AIDS. So there, is a, there was a campaign and a great move of God in prayer. God. So we cried to God and we used Second Chronicles seven fourteen again and we fell down before the Lord and repented after knowing the cause of AIDS. And by 1990, to brother, God had started healing AIDS supernaturally That's in Uganda. By the year 2000, what the World Health Organization had predicted was proved wrong. God cancelled the report. And by 2000, Ugandan, Uganda rate of AIDS had dropped from 30% to 18%. They came back to do research and do statistics, and it had dropped to 18%. Isn't that amazing? Hallelujah. And, and <laughs> it's, 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 just, it's, it's just amazing that by the year 2002, it had even dropped to 12%. It went on dropping until Uganda became like the case study. All the nations were attracted to Uganda to see how have you managed it. The wife of the president was called upon in the United States to give a speech how they have managed. But this was a campaign, an effort of the church together with the government. And we introduced the principle of abstinence and being faithful to your partner. And we started teaching young people to abstain from sex until they are married. Yes. And we started teaching married people how to be faithful. Of course, God was healing people. Many people have been healed, proved healed, positive, and today they are negative. They have children, everything is okay. But we didn't want to continue in that lifestyle. We had to teach the people how to live a right life, a holy life, faithful yes. to their partners. And of course, of course, in the Western world, they added C. The principle of abstinence, being faithful, and started in Uganda. And then they added C, which is condom. But we didn't teach that in Uganda. <laughs> we, we taught abstinence and being faithful. And uh, by 2005, uh, the, the world, I think there was another research in Uganda, and the, the level had dropped to eight. And then 2006 is when I last heard of the report, it was 5%. Praise God. From 30 to 5%, and that is God only who can Great do that. Miracle. So uh, we, I have seen, we have seen a number of things. God mm. transforming the leaders of our country. By 1995, the Lord gave us a word concerning our country. And he spoke to us that Uganda has a special call, has a strategic role to play in the redemptive work of, 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 the, of the world. And, and you know, some nations that have strategic roles always go through a lot of problems yes. because the enemy is against them, like Israel, like some nations like that one. So we, we rose up to pray and the Lord encouraged us to institute prayer all over the country. 
unceasing prayer. And God gave us a word. He spoke to us that build me a net of prayer and I'll fish your nation out of troubled waters. We didn't know what it meant until the Lord yes. took us to the book of uh, Genesis, how Abraham took the land of Canaan by instituting altars and the Lord was inspiring us to teach people to institute family altars, to turn their churches into prayer houses, to form community prayer altars and towers. And we started in the city center, a prayer center, which was unceasing, 24 hour oh, prayer. Oh, that's powerful. It, it, it was instituted in Uganda which eventually turned into a prayer mountain. Mm -hmm. we, we bought a mountain of prayer where there is prayer 24 hours. Even if you come today, you find not less than 100 people every day. And every Friday night on that prayer mountain, there are not less than 800 believers praying and crying to God. Immediately you go to that prayer mountain, the spirit of prayer just takes you. You know, it just arrests you. It's such powerful and we started seeing the miraculous of the Lord in 1997 we called upon a national repentance and reconciliation in the nation because the Lord spoke to us that our nation had a blood guilt yes. so we called upon a national repentance and reconciliation and the wife of the president came to officially open it. The president also came and we asked, we requested him to do a prophetic act. We gave him the word the Lord had put on our hearts that Uganda was dedicated to Islam in 1975. And the president did it, so the president had to do a prophetic act. Oh. And our president really? accepted. He took the flag of the nation as a symbol of authority and gave it back into the hands of Christians. So we rededicated our nation to God. And this was the beginning of the transformation in Uganda. Many political leaders started being transformed. And today, as I speak, we have a prayer fellowship among members of parliament. Prayer fellowship was opened among the cabinet ministers, among bankers, among lawyers, in almost every sector of life in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Prayer fellowships. Oh. In the state house, every year, the president calls a, a national prayer breakfast and invites one of the pastors to speak and give a word for the year. And this has been going on and on, and the wife of the president is born again. The do one of the daughters of the president is a pastor leading one big church. God. So it's it's Powerful. just amazing. And uh, the president, uh, in, in, in effort to <clears throat> fight corruption, he introduced a new ministry in Uganda. We have a ministry called Ministry of Ethics and Integrity among cabinet ministers and members of parliament. It looks for the, it checks their integrity and checks, and the minister must be born again believer. <laughs> and the minister of ethics and integrity That's is something. a preacher, is a man of the word of God. Maybe one day you will invite him to Finland, <laughs> hear him speak and, and preach. Is a, is a wonderful man of God. And the president also uh, requested the church to give him about 200, I don't remember the number, but 200 and about 250 young people to train them. The Pentecostal church gave young men, men to the government to train them so they can become anti-corruption, you know, force yes. to fight corruption yes. in our country, in revenue authority. And the Commission of Revenue Authority is a born-again sister who is really powerful in the Lord. And, you know, the things began changing like that. And that is how we're encouraged to start go to the nations taking this good news that God is still in the, you know, in the business of transforming nations. And we have seen it happen. I've seen many miracles happen in Egypt, for instance. Yes. I've seen blind eyes open in, in Egypt. I've seen deaf and dumb talk, cancer disappearing. And, you know, a number of things, you know, not only in Uganda, but we have seen them outside Uganda in other countries. So God is still answering prayer, brother, up to today. <laughs> I'm so excited to hear about this uh, news, what God is doing in Uganda and internationally. And also, I'm very encouraged that God really intervened to so desperate situation that Uganda faced. And now it has become as a uh, example to other nations mm. what can be done 
true fervent effective prayer. So you have written this book, uh, uh, Effective Fervent Prayer, Voimallinen Rukous, and uh, you mentioned there about also the inner court and uh, actually the tabernacle prayer, and uh, you are dividing uh, the prayer levels into three different spheres. There are three different levels in, in, in your book. You mentioned uh, about them in, in this book more distinctively. Uh, there is this uh, uh, outer court, inner court and innermost court prayer. Can you describe ab about it? What, it is, uh, man, what, it, what does it man, mean? You know, the Bible, the Old Testament of the Bible is the shadow of the New Testament. The New Testament is the substance. So whatever is written in the Old Testament it somehow is reflected in the New Testament, in the substance. Yes. So I, I believe the pattern has not changed. This is a pattern of prayer. Prayer is a journey. As I said, prayer does not stop on the asking level, where we petition and tell God, give me, give me, give me. There we, we become God's friends in, in need, not in need. I believe God is looking for friends indeed, not in need. Exactly. But if we go to God with give me, give me, give me, that, that's not enough. I believe that's why Jesus taught about in the book of Luke chapter, uh, chapter 11, verses 9, said, ask, seek, and knock. You know, this asking, seek, and knock, these are levels of prayer. Yes. It's like climbing. You ask, but you seek. When you are asking, you are not seeking. God doesn't has to come close to you. Mm -hmm. But when you are seeking God, the Bible says, draw close and he will draw close to you. He doesn't draw close when you are asking, he stretches his hand yes. and gives you what you need. Hallelujah. And the knocking <laughs> level of prayer is the intercessory level of prayer, where we get to the heart of God, but we get to the heart of God after we have sought him. And when we seek him, we break through in that place of communion where he shares his heart with us, where he shares his mind with us, yes. and we can be able to pray his mind. He has his mind for Finland. He has his heart for Finland. But how can we know God's heart for Finland unless we go in a place of seeking the Lord? Yes. That is why the Bible says, seek me and you live. So I divide this tabernacle into three, the outer court. You know, the tabernacle was built in a very amazing way yes. that all the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel built around the tabernacle. And it's surprisingly enough, everybody built strategically and Judah mm -hmm. built at the gate of the tabernacle. Yes. And the gate, the word Judah means praise. The Bible says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and praise. Yes. <laughs> you know, we enter with praise. What does praise do? Praise acts as a lubricator. It lubricates our spiritual man so that we can be flexible in prayer, mm -hmm. so that our prayer is not mechanical, is not full of friction. Uh, when we praise God, the anointing is released. There is a spirit of God that is released, and we can be flexible in prayer, and prayer is joy. So when you enter into the outer court, there are two very major things, very yes. important things. There is what we call out of sacrifice, which represents confession of sin. Yes. And when we confess our sin, we are sure that he's going to hear us and forgive us. Yes. And when we confess this sin, we approach, we go close. And the th another thing you meet in the tabernacle is the lava, yes. where they had crystal water. Yes. The priests used to wash their feet because the outer court was dirty. It had many animals. And outer court is a place full of confusion mm. and interruption. Exactly. Because it's full of sheep and there's confusion. The sheep used to cry and, and all confusion. So you can't pray. In, in this prayer journey, you don't stop in the outer court. You need to repent. You know, the water represents repentance. And you enter into the holy place. Mm -hmm. And the first thing you encounter in the holy place is the table of showbread. And the table of showbread, there were 12 breads yes. representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And this bread represents the word of God. The word of God enriches our prayer life. And when you get the word of God and you begin to meditate upon the word of God, you get revelation. And revelation always is what drives us to seek God more. Mm. And you know, this revelation is represented by the seven lampstands. Yes. 
which is light, illumination. And you know, you, that, that is what takes you into the Holy of Holies, where you encounter the very tangible presence of God. And as the, you know, the, the closer you get to God in prayer, the hungrier you become. And it's desire that draws us closer to God. Yes. If a person doesn't have a desire, he can't pray. If someone has no hunger, thirst for God, that is why the Bible says that blessed are the hungry, for they will be filled. Yeah. You can't be filled Precisely. when you're not hungry. That's so the, there is the, the greater sign of spirituality is hunger for God. Is pe are people hungry? Are people desperate for God? If people are desperate for God, you will see it in their prayer. They, they can cry in prayer. They yeah. can draw close. It's not about having problems like we had in Uganda. It's about having a passion. Yes. Do you have a passion? Do you have a desire for God? And desire is not an earthly commodity. Mm. It's a heavenly substance. Desire comes from God. Hunger for God comes from heaven. And God imparts the hunger in you as a sign of beckoning. Every time you feel hunger, you know God is beckoning me. He's telling me, come close. I want to come close to you. I want us to meet in a place of communion and fellowship so that I can fellowship with you, even sharing my burdens with you. Because intercession begins from heaven. God shares his heart with an intercessor, yes. and in return, the intercessor gives it back to God because they are, they are on earth. God chose to partner with us in prayer. Prayer is partnership with God, mm. so that God can accomplish his will here on earth. God's will is not automatic. God's will is prayed for. And this is what most people don't know. Most people think God's will is automatic, but it's not so. Otherwise, Jesus, being the son of God, he wouldn't have prayed, let your will be done, Father. And he, told, he taught us in prayer as we pray, we should always pray that let the will of the Lord be done on earth yes. as it is in heaven. So this is what the tabernacle is all about, experiencing the presence of God, experiencing that place of communion and fellowship with God. That's we are needing, absolutely. And it's so powerful to have this profound teaching about the journey of prayer. It's journey, and many of Finns have not entered to that journey so deeply. This is your second trip now to Finland. Yes. And uh, you have seen some churches here and some Christians. What would you figure out to be the most critical challenge in Finland in order to reach the breakthrough in spiritual realms? Um, I, I can't say that I've seen all churches, but uh, one, one thing I sense in the spirit concerning Finland is uh, I believe that the church in Finland needs a, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. There is a need for another Pentecost experience, not Pentecost as, as, as a body or as an denomination, because Pentecost means experience with the Holy Spirit, baptism. So I, I really feel like, uh, you know, you can't make people pray. Yes. Because the Bible says we all have weaknesses in prayer, but the Spirit himself helps us in our weaknesses with groans that words cannot express. Yes. The Spirit helps in weaknesses, meaning there are weaknesses in prayer. Number one weakness is obstruction. Number two weakness is uh, wandering thoughts lack of staying power. Some people have no lack of staying power. Mm. They, they, have, they don't have power to stay in prayer. Yeah. So I really feel when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon the church, the power of prayer is tired up. You know, when you look in the Gospels, the prayer life of the disciples were different in the Gospels when they were still with Jesus from the, their prayer life in the book of Acts. Yes. Why? Because they had not yet received the Holy Spirit. Yes. And every time they were reported sleeping. Yeah. On the mountain of transfiguration, they slept. In the garden of Gethsemane, they slept. But after the Holy Spirit had come upon them, they are not reported sleeping again. When they were supposed to be sleeping, they were praying. Yes. The Bible says after the day of Pentecost, yeah. even before they were crying and praying that God will send the promise. Yes. And when the promise came, they baptized in the power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Their prayer lives changed. Powerful. Immediately. That's powerful. 
Can we now pray together in this closing? We are closing this program. We have spoken about a lot of prayer, but we have not yet exercised it. Amen. Let's do it now and pray breakthrough in Finland and the spiritual realms. Hallelujah. Here. Please do this, Hallelujah. brother. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we Hallelujah. want to come before you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Lord, Jesus. it's not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. Hallelujah. Lord, we ask you today for the nation of Finland to be the inheritance yes. of your people. For your word clearly tells us that ask me of the nations and I'll give them to you to be your inheritance Amen. and the ends of the world to be your possession. Lord, we pray for this nation. You are the creator of nations. Lord, from one man you made all nations of men and you determine Amen. the exact places where they should live. And even you, you determine the time of their visitation. Lord, I believe this is your time for the yes. visitation of this great nation of yes. Finland. This nation that Thank once you, produced Jesus. mighty missionaries that came down to Africa, went to Asia, brought about the light of the gospel. Lord, it is time to reopen the wells of revival in this land of Finland Hallelujah. and Europe as large. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus that your light will shine forth yes. in this nation of Finland. Lord, we pray that you pour out your spirit upon the church in Finland. Amen. Lord, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, you, your word clearly tells us that if we know how to give good things to our children, they don't ask us for bread and we give them stone. Won't you give us the spirit if we ask you, Lord, our Father? We ask you, send your Holy Spirit Hallelujah. upon this nation of Finland. Lord, change every sector of this nation. We pray for the transformation of this nation in a mighty way, oh God. We especially pray for the young generation in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, that you will change Hallelujah. their mindset and change their heart, Lord, and Lord, their mind towards God. Lord, the young generation is so hungry yes. for God and for the supernatural, but they are looking for God and for the supernatural from wrong sources. But we ask you, Father, for a divine encounter, Lord. We pray that this young, the young generation will have a divine encounter with you. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, for the restoration of power in the church in Finland, restoration of power, Lord, that the gospel will be accompanied by miracles, signs, and wonders, that people will again see healings, will again see transformation of lives, will again see powerful Amen. healings and Jesus, deliverances. And the name of our Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified. We thank you and Hallelujah. we bless you, O oh God. We also pray for the media ministries in this nation. Lord, that they will reach out as a voice yes. to, the, to many lives and will touch many lives and transform many lives. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray believing. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Michael. God bless you, and uh, it was wonderful interview.